Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Right. You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Whoa! What's going on, everybody? My name's Timmy Joe. I'm making videos about computers all up on the internet. Got a messy desk, figured some stuff out, but we're doing an awesome, cool video today. And uh, that's because we have momentous occasions upon us. Everyone's talking about it. AMD just had a keynote where they basically said, Hey, Intel. Oh! We're the kings now. Not only do we have the higher core count chips that are cheaper, but. We figured our stuff out and now we're going to have a processor that has better IPC and clocks high enough to take the all out performance crown. This hasn't happened in a long time. In fact, I did a video on the last processor to do this, which was the Athlon uh, 64 FX62 which was an extremely expensive processor that at a lower clock speed could beat the competing Intel chip at the time. And at the time, I didn't have one of those, okay, to test. But today I do, today I do. Actually, I did like six months ago and I've been lagging on the video. But I wanna thank Chris Alexander for donating this. I don't even know if it's the right chip because if you look at it, it's been lapped or something. But this is a, Pentium Extreme Edition 965, a $1,000 processor from Q1 of 2006. And we're gonna see how it does stuff today because I'm interested. This is the last time Intel failed, the last time AMD took the crown. And I wanna test and see just what, you know, what it can do a little bit in 20, uh, you know, 2019 here today. We're gonna put an AIO on it. Everyone complained. It actually has two physical cores on it, which is crazy. That's something that, uh, you know, was really hurting them at the time because there was no infinity fabric or interconnect that could properly, you know, harness the power of two physical cores talking to each other. So we're gonna uh, go ahead and put it on the test bench. I hope get it set up right. I had to drill out one of my AIO brackets because socket 775 and I don't know, just I'd rather, I want to use an AIO on it instead of uh, you know anything else. And uh, yeah, so uh, before we get to that, think uh, I have a CVPN for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring the channel. They're a wonderful partner, a VPN service that is very inexpensive, very awesome, very easy to use. You can get on there, get uh, a VPN for two years and save 20% with a bonus code that they're giving y'all, and that'll help you with your downloads securely. You know, it'll make it so you can uh, you know, torrent, uh, you know, exclusively uh, so that your ISP can't watch you. And it'll make it so you can, you know, look at other countries' Netflix. You could uh, circumvent the Article 13 and all that stuff. So uh, go check it out. It's like 40 some dollars with my code to get a two year VPN, a one time fee, you have the VPN, you don't have to worry about it for two years. You wanna do something crazy on the internet, you just click it on, you're out public Wi-Fi, click it on your phone, and away you go. So let's get to this. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this sucker onto this motherboard, and we're gonna hope and pray that it works, and we're gonna test out the Pentium Extreme Edition 965, and see how she does in some 2019 tasks. It's gonna be amazing.
What's going on, people? We got her all loaded up. Extreme power! Terry Crews is behind me. I'm screaming. We're running Fire Strike, and it's hilarious. I just switched to motherboards. Uh, as you can see, this is an Asus uh, P5Q3 uh, Extreme, no, uh, Deluxe Wi-Fi. And it's a DDR3 socket 775 board. The other one, the EVGA one, I think I broke it because I couldn't get any CPUs to work in it. Um, not, not, you know, I thought maybe it was this one. Holy jeez, she's laggy. <laughs> Uh, but we've done this before with the AMD, you know, reigning champ from 2006, the FX 65 or 62, uh, which was beat in this thing. And we'll go over some statistics and what have you and some parallels to what's happening right now. But uh, 4,036. Oh my goodness. That's a, that's an awesome score. That's not bad, actually. Uh, it's actually kind of surprising because if you check out my video, it got a 41, well, a little bit better, actually, fairly similar physics score. In fact, this one beat it. Interesting. I do have this overclocked, but I also have the Athlon uh, 64 uh, FX62 overclocked as well. Sorry, I was using an um, uh, R9 280X in this, and it beat out. The graphics score from the, yeah, so no wonder there's some sort of a bottleneck there, which is very interesting. Um, so just to put, explain what I'm talking about here, this system was running DDR2 for sure and was also on a much lower end motherboard. And uh, it, this is a dual core and this is a dual core with hyper threading, actually totaling a total of four threads this Intel 90, 965 Extreme Edition. And the physics score are very similar, even though this has better RAM and stuff like that. Like, you know what, at the time they were saying that the Athlon was much better at gaming, and I would believe it because this has a um, lower end graphics card. It has an R9 280, like a 7970. Like, you know, what was a, comp a competition for, I would say, this seven, the um, GTX 770, and I've got a 780 Ti on here. So, yeah, the fact that this, the, the graphics score is higher on that other system, it kind of shows that the, maybe this can do a little bit better compute, but the gaming, the actual throughput to the video card, there's something going on there. It probably has something to do with uh, how this is actually two physical CPUs that can't communicate very well together. Uh, and yeah, so interesting stuff. All right, so I've got some stuff to say about this. Uh, I want to thank uh, SP Tech Lab a video I followed along very, very closely to on how to overclock this puppy because he had uh, shots of the BIOS, he had shots of, you know, really everything uh, of how, how he set this up. He actually was using uh, an air cooler and an HD15. I'm using the uh, Captain 240 Pro, which in my testing actually competes with this uh, pretty well. Actually, might be even a little bit better because it's an AIO. Um, and this can be the NHG15 sort of, so we're all talking sort of the same coolers here, but he had his overclock to 4.6 gigahertz. And the stock on the Intel Extreme Edition Pentium D965 is 3.7 gigahertz. So you have 900 megahertz overclock, but you can tell from some of his numbers here, and I'll, I'll show you a Cinebench result uh, in a second here. We'll go back. He shows it. There we go. 3D Mark Fire Strike. What did he get? He got a 49. Anyways, yeah, he's got a very similar motherboard to me. A little bit better. Look at the massive heat pipes on it. So maybe that's why he's able to get a better overclock. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. But I want to thank him. I watched his video. Worth a watch. I'll leave it and I'll put it in the cards if you want to watch his on this because he does a lot of gaming benchmarks. Something I'm not going to do because in 2019, there's no reason to use a CPU. It is terrible. It get, well, well, it gets 110 in Cinebench. 110 in Cinebench, and that's all I could get out of it. Because stock, that's what I got, and when I overclocked, that's what I got. I'm throttling something here, and even though I've got a fan on the chipset and everything, it just doesn't seem, and I also have a problem with my motherboard where it says USB device not recognized anytime I move this little Wi-Fi board here. Anyways, so, it's been fun playing with this, but also a huge pain in the ass. I just have not had very easy trouble getting to this point. But what I want to show you 
is something cool, and I bet you've never seen this before. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that open. Uh, have you ever seen Cinebench R9.6? Well, some of you must have because your computer enthusiasts sing you're older. I was not that hardcore into computers when this was out in 2006, to the fact of running benchmarks and stuff like that. But uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So I want to make sure Hardware Info 64 is open as well because we'll check the temperatures uh, while we're doing We got her open. So I'm going to run the multi-core rendering test on this. And the reason why is, uh, we'll give you some quick specs, 65 nanometers is what this process is. It's a dual core with hyperthreading, 3.73 gigahertz, and 130 watt TDP. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, apparently when uh, Nantech looked at this, they had already looked at the next generation Conroe, which was what the Core 2 duos were going to be, and they were saying like, the last of a generation. This is, you know, the, everything they could squeeze out of this because something better was coming. And uh, if you head over to this article here from Anantec, it actually shows that CPU I'm comparing it to, the Athlon 64FX62 of 2.8 gigahertz gets a 762, and I'm getting a 700. I've even seen 730 if I don't have like Steam open and stuff like that because that will actually affect that benchmark quite a bit. Uh, so it's doing much better overclocked than that 664, but um, when you run Cinebench R15, it's way too hard of a load for it, and it, uh, it winds up throttling something on this board, and there's just no sense. Buddy got 140 in Cinebench, uh, so you know, his motherboard must just be a little bit better to be able to get the most out of that. Like Huge VRM cooling on this thing, and it still was hot to the touch so much that I had to put a fan on it. So. I think what we should get to next, because I don't have any more slides, right? Oh, in-game department, it's four to one for the FX processor, clearly making it the best available gaming CPU on the market. So yes, AMD actually was winning in 2006. And it's one of, it was the last time for real. They kind of battled it out with core count stuff, but there's a lot of parallels between then and now. Interestingly enough, with this CPU, it's running at 3.7 gigahertz and can actually overclock into the fours. And the AMD CPU was beating it at 2.8 gigahertz, much the same as now with Ryzen, we see that it's running at 4.6 gigahertz. So the clock speeds haven't gone up that much, but apparently their eight core can beat a 9900K at five gigahertz or 5.3 gigahertz. So Fingers crossed that that's true, that it's actually the performance king, because it would be silly if like stock speeds it just barely beat it out, but you could still get that, you know, 5.3 gigahertz on some of the uh, Intel chips and you couldn't, you know, overclock it enough to really, you know, whatever. But well, I'm assuming with seven nanometer and everything, the new Ryzen chips should put them on the absolute no dispute top, which is pretty cool. And I think their reign will last a little longer than it did you know, back in 2006, because Intel took over not far after that with the Core 2 Duos. So I'm going to load up a couple of games. It'll take a minute because it takes a minute to do anything on the CPU. The Windows experience is slow. Like even if you put a, like I've got an SSD on here, uh, you know, a decent graphics card. It's got DDR3 RAM even, and it's slow to load things. It's slow to install things. It's slow to unzip things. It's just terribly slow. It's It's almost borderline unusable. Uh, you know, with an SSD, I guess you could get away with it. Like, I don't know, let's just go and see how easy YouTube runs. We'll, we'll do that real quick, then we'll do some gaming. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Nano time, what's up? All right, it does YouTube playback just fine. So you can use this as an everyday machine, sort of. Like, I mean, an Intel Atom low-powered system still gets 100 in Cinebench, and those are quad-core. So like, the single-threaded performance on this is enough to somewhat get it by. Thanks, by the way, the Nano video's got 25,000 views. That's crazy. That's gonna help me <laughs> quite a bit. Hope you enjoyed it. I didn't break anything yet today, at least. Oh, I thought that was this, it was a bus driving by. I have the windows open because it's so hot in here from this thing. With the lights and everything, it's, it's ridiculous. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up Grand Theft Auto. We're gonna see how that plays out. Cause with the Athlon, it didn't pan out very well at all. All right, we've got Fraps loaded up. I use Fraps with these old CPUs because it's not as intense as using like MSI Afterburner to show the FPS. We are here, I'll show the settings, graphics, here we go. 
And uh, FXA is off, population density is uh, really low, normal, and high for most of this stuff. Uh, you know, this is uh, like a 780 Ti, you should be able to get 60 frames a second at 1080p maxed out with this, you know. So, let's see what Franklin can do. And what happened with the uh, FX62 Athlon processor was, what is going on? The input lag on this is just ridiculous. Is it the what? Oh man. What is going on? I can't even drive right! <laughs> what? What is going on? The input lag is absolutely atrocious or something. It's just in the cars. What is going on? I don't, this is running like a bag of crap. Uh, what I wanted to do was drive, because what would happen is as I was driving the textures on the ground with that other CPU, I can't even drive. It's like I'm drunk or something. It's like Grand Theft Auto Drunk Edition. I just want to drive and then see if eventually the textures can't keep up. It's a little better now. Oh my god, it's impossible! <laughs> what is going on? Oh my god, it's so bad. Have you ever seen this kind of a drunk... Okay. Go that way. Thank you. Okay, we've got a clear run of road. Let's see if I can outrun the ground textures without crashing. Oh, here, see, there we go. We're outrunning the ground textures. Okay, so it's the exact same experience as the Athlon CPU, where the ground just becomes see-through. <laughs> there we go, she loaded up. It's such a bad experience. That mall disappeared. <laughs> All right. This is terrible. Okay, so Grand Theft Auto plays about the same. It's, it, it, I think it's worse. I'm pretty sure I can at least control the character with the other CPU. So, I don't know, man. Let's try one more thing. All right, we've got CSGO loaded up in the map Zoo, which is a newer map. This is a game that comes from the time of dual cores. This should run on a dual core, although it's been updated like crazy in these days, that's not so true. But uh, I have all the settings turned off, okay? It's on lowest settings, no anti-aliasing, nothing, no FXAA, nothing. 720p, and I'm getting 60 frames a second with a 780 Ti. So, yeah, is this playable? Sure, here, we'll see if I can get a kill. If I can get a, there's some bots playing on this map, but I've never played this map before, but it's look, it looks pretty cool. Uh, you're being too cautious. That's probably a bot right there. Oh, somebody died over here. Where's the T? Where's the T? Let's go kill him. Ah, I killed bot Chris. What site is the bomb planted at, yo? I'm going to B. Hopefully it's at B. This way? No, what? Why are you pointing that, that way then? A, A is that way. B is this way. Ah! Uh, I got killed. I got killed. So, you could game on this. You could play Counter-Strike. If you feel like turning all the settings off, you can get a nice crispy 60 frames a second at 720p. And it's not so bad, actually. Well, eh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a ball pop kind of guy. Let's go see if we can get a kill. We'll get another kill. I'm in the baboon pit. I heard some glass break. I mean, oh, I got shot. Anyways. So I know that wasn't very many benchmarks or gaming and whatnot, but I spent an hour getting the CPU cooler mounted, drilling out the, the, the mount for it, because it's not meant for that, because Socket 775's this cooler is a little bit smaller. And then I spent, uh, you know, the motherboard didn't work, so I spent 45 minutes troubling shooting that. And then I had to install Windows on our SSD because uh, there's no UAFI, so uh, that took another 45 minutes easily on this crappy system. So I spent like four hours today just monkeying around, and then when I finally got to everything, like it's just not worth it for me to do much more, especially considering SP Tech. Tech Lab, SP's Tech Lab, did a comprehensive review at 4.6 gigahertz of lots of games. So if you want to check out the gaming performance for real, you can go check that out. But I think you can tell from Grand Theft Auto V, which is how old of a game at this point. Like, it's from freaking 2000, <laughs> it's, it's from around the era. But uh, also, you know, uh, Counter-Strike Source, 
which was a game from 2014, and definitely could have played on dual cores at the time. You can only play it at 720p, lowest settings, on a 780Ti getting 60 frames a second. It's pretty bad performance. So uh, I'm not watching Joe on Instagram, Twitter. I want to thank, I believe his name's Alex, that, uh, or Alexander. Well, I, anyways, you know who you are. He sent me the Pentium. I'm going to send it back to him. And uh, he's actually the one who provided this guy, which I already reviewed. And I'm sending him this. I think I'm going to try and do a video on it. It's a GTX 295 EVGA. I'm going to send him this in exchange for this, which is a pretty good deal. Pretty cool. Uh, awesome. But if you have anything you want to donate to the channel, or you have some cool hardware like this that you want to see me mess around with, me at TimmyJoe.com. Go ahead and send me an email. I also have a Patreon. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Timmy Joe. And uh, it's wonderful to play around with uh, an old computer like this and overclock it and, uh, you know, have to put VRM cooling on it and uh, run an RGB <laughs> AIO on a Socket 775 Pentium and um, Terry Crews. And you see I'm running... Oh, wait. Where's Terry Crews? There he is. Extreme! But uh, you see I'm running Cinebench R20. I can't believe it's actually running. Because there's no way the... I guess it must have the instruction sets if it's doing. But it's, I've already done like two takes of this. And it's been running for like six minutes. So when it's done, I'll just... Here, I'll post the results. How, how silly is that? I mean, it got uh, 10... Or what, a 110 in Cinemench R15. So <laughs> no surprises there. But it did pretty good. And have you ever seen Cinemench R9.5? That was pretty fun. So uh, it's... It's just fun to mess around with this stuff. But when it comes to a Pentium, spending more than a day messing around with it, I'm I'm done with it. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and send it back to where is, which where is it came. But I thank you very much for watching this video. Thanks very much for checking out the Nano video yesterday. Lots of views on that. 100,000 is coming soon. It'll be fun. I'll see you guys in another video at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram Twitter. Have a good day.